Chapter 3 On the Road to London Oliver didn't know where to go. He walked for a long time, and he was very tired. He sat down on a milestone to rest. The milestone said, London, 70 miles. London, he thought. Mr Bumble can't find me in London. So Oliver began walking again. Oliver walked 20 miles the first day. He ate only one piece of bread with some water. At night he slept near the road. The next morning he was cold and hungry. He bought some bread with his only penny. He walked 12 miles that day. As the days passed, Oliver became very weak. A kind man gave him some bread and cheese. A poor old lady gave him some food and gentle words. On the seventh day, Oliver was exhausted. He arrived in a little town near London. He sat near the road to rest. Then a strange boy looked at Oliver and said, Hello. What's the matter? The boy had big ears and little eyes. He was short. He was Oliver's age. He wore a long man's coat and a man's hat. Oliver told him his sad story. Come with me, said the strange boy. I can help you. He smiled and took Oliver to an inn. At the inn, Oliver had bread, ham and something to drink. I feel better, said Oliver. The boy smiled and asked, Are you going to London? Yes, answered Oliver. Do you want a place to sleep? Oh, yes, please, said Oliver. I slept outside in the cold for seven nights. Stay with me. I know an old man in London. You can sleep at his house. Oliver was happy to accept his help. My name's Jack Dawkins, but they call me Dodger. The two boys walked to the big city together. It was almost 11pm when they arrived in London. Oliver followed Dodger. He looked at the small, dirty streets and the old houses. The ground was wet. Everything was ugly. There was an awful smell everywhere. Dodger stopped in front of an old black house. He and Oliver went up some broken stairs. They entered a dark, dirty room. There were a lot of young boys. There was an ugly old man near the fire. He had red hair and a red beard. He wore dirty clothes. He smiled at Oliver and said, I'm happy to meet you. I'm Fagin. Oliver looked at all the handkerchiefs hanging in the room. Fagin said, We washed them. Now sit down and eat some sausages. Oliver was happy to eat some hot food in a warm room. He soon fell asleep. The next morning, Oliver woke up late. Fagin prepared a cup of coffee. He turned around and looked at Oliver. Oliver closed his eyes and didn't move. Fagin thought, Oliver is still asleep. So he took a box from a secret place in the floor. He put the box on the table and opened it. He took out many beautiful watches and splendid jewels. Suddenly, Fagin saw Oliver wake up. Fagin quickly closed the box. He was angry and said, Why are you awake? I'm sorry, sir. I just opened my eyes, said Oliver. Huh. Did you see those pretty things? asked Fagin. Yes, sir, said Oliver. I'm an old man, and they are all I have. Now go and wash your face. Oliver thought, Fagin must be a miser. He lives in a dirty place and has many jewels. At that moment, Dodger and his friend Charlie Bates arrived. 
They all sat down and had breakfast. Did you boys work this morning? Fagin asked. Yes, we did. Look, here are some wallets and some handkerchiefs. Chapter 4 Fagin's Game After breakfast, Fagin and the two boys played a strange game. The old man put a wallet, a watch, some money and some handkerchiefs in his pocket. Then he walked around the room. The boys followed him. Sometimes he stopped. I'm looking at a shop window, he said. Or, I'm talking to a friend. The boys moved quickly and took the things from his pockets. Good, well done, said Fagin. Or, no, I felt that. Try again. They played the game many times. Oliver watched and laughed a lot. Do you want to play the game, Oliver? Fagin asked. Yes, please, Oliver said. He wanted to play too. Soon he was good at the game. You're a good boy, Oliver, said Fagin. When the game was over, two young ladies came to visit Dodger and Charlie Bates. One was called Bet and the other Nancy. Their hair was long and their dresses were dirty. One morning, Fagin said to Oliver, You can go out with Dodger and Charlie Bates today. Oliver was happy and excited. He wanted to work. He followed the two boys to the market. They walked very slowly. Suddenly, Dodger stopped. Be quiet, he said. Do you see that old man near the bookshop? He's perfect. The old man was in front of the bookshop window. Dodger and Charlie Bates went behind the old man. Dodger put his hand in the old man's pocket and pulled out a handkerchief. He gave it to Charlie Bates and they both ran away. Oliver immediately understood the strange game. He also understood the mystery of Fagin's watches and jewels. He began to run. At that moment, the old man put his hand in his pocket. He did not find his handkerchief. He turned around and cried, Stop thief! Other people cried, Stop thief! Dodger and Charlie Bates cried, Stop thief! Everyone ran after poor Oliver. Oliver ran and fell. A policeman caught him and said, Get up! I didn't steal the handkerchief, cried Oliver. Two other boys stole it, but they aren't here. You're the thief, said the policeman. No, no. Stop. I work at the bookshop and I saw everything, said another man. This boy is innocent. Two other boys stole the handkerchief. Oliver was free, but he was very weak and fell to the ground. The old man was very kind and said, Oh, the poor boy. Look at his white face. He must come home with me. He called a carriage and took Oliver to his house. The old man's name was Mr Brownlow. He lived in a very nice house in a quiet London street. When Dodger and Charlie Bates arrived home, Fagin asked, Where's Oliver? A policeman took him away, said Dodger. What? cried Fagin. He was Furious. Oliver can tell the police about us. We must find him. A strong man opened the door and entered the room. He had dirty clothes. He was about 35 years old and had angry eyes. His name was Bill Sykes. He was Fagin's friend. An old dog followed him. You're angry today, Mr Sykes, said Fagin. Give me something to drink, Fagin, said Sykes angrily. Fagin told Sykes about Oliver. Sykes said, We must find that boy. I have a plan. Listen carefully.